Pinkerton uh, Trailhead. There is tons of big old mosquitoes or flies and you definitely, definitely, definitely need bear spray. Oh, uh, not bear, well yeah, you need that too, but bug spray. It is pretty bad just on the trailhead. There's lots of parking spaces. So this is at 8 a.m. on a Wednesday. This is the beginning of the hike. Blue blazes. So this will feel probably like a typical, typical deep forest hike. So it has not rained in about three to five days. So it's still a little muddy. And here at the beginning, there, there's planks and stuff. But if it's raining, this will be a very muddy place to hike in. So there is definitely tons of bugs here. Uh, this is why up north, usually wherever I've hiked really up north, there's always tons of bugs in the summer, but summers are amazing. Uh, and the uh, days are not cold. It's what this is end of June and it's cold enough cool enough for me to wear my rain jacket that's why I always wear rain gear always 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 easy to put bug spray on this it doesn't soak it in uh, and it works and I always wear a hat for the same reason put bug spray on the hat and you're here you know you're okay so you can chill from the bugs definitely that deep forest bugs here uh, like there is everywhere north that I've been can't show them but they're flying everywhere. But yeah, I just wanted to, uh, you know, rain gear. A good rain gear with good vents, vents so you can wear it when it's not raining. If it doesn't have uh, vents, it gets really hot under this. This is why it's good for cold water hiking too. It's good, literally your rain gear, get the best quality rain gear you can find with the be most vents as possible. That's it. So I had one more piece of gear review. Uh, my pants. I got these from North Face. They have these vents. Uh, I actually, these are my winter pants as well. I just put really thick uh, sweatpants underneath and I have these vents and on the side there is vents. And you can see the bugs all around. Also uh, useful in the summer because of the vents. Super light duty. Uh, great pants. I know North Face made them. I don't think I can find them anymore, but they make some uh, great pants. I think lightweight, water resistant with lots of vents, I think is the best pants for any type of weather hiking because you can adapt it to anything. If I get too hot here, I just open the vents. Uh, I can take off my uh, the legs and make it into shorts which is not something I would do here here I would just open uh, open the vents to be cool because of all the bugs and they're also easy to apply bug spray to like I said water resistant so they're they're great and like here's the boots these are baits I like them because you can wear winter socks underneath and tighten them up in the summer to where they feel super comfortable I don't like them because the grip is not good in their slippery shoes, but they're good for this type of terrain. Uh, muddy stuff. So, so far, this, I'm not even a mile in. They, they still have, uh, they still have uh, nice pathways built, but I suspect that's gonna stop soon. And this is like, can be, you can make this over a 20 mile hike but it leads to Lake Superior, and it's in uh, northern Michigan. And we'll see what the views are like. But so far, this is an easy trail. Good, easy trailhead, easy to find, uh, and very <laughs> extremely well maintained. So this doesn't even feel like backcountry. I mean, it's not. It's got things built. So even a beginner should be comfortable here. And it's well blazed.
so the ground is really muddy in places uh, and I checked the weather it hasn't rained in a few days so if this uh, if you're gonna hike this particular trail after a rain or something expect it to be very very muddy and bring good waterproof high boots and like get some boot blousers uh, and buzz your boots uh, buzz your uh, trousers so you can keep them clean to some extent because this would be really really muddy uh, the bugs are out of this world but the bug repellent works great I can see them they're not bothering me at all and another uh, gear uh, review so I have this Garmin uh, Phoenix 6 this is my most expensive uh, piece of hiking gear but I like it uh, it's my backup uh, maps it's my backup I record my uh, this is how I record my hikes and um, I can just trace my way back if uh, necessary this time I did not bring paper maps but that I always recommend uh, be able to know how to find where you're at especially in forest hikes uh, this one was well marked so this should this shouldn't be an issue but I have you should have electronic and paper maps uh, if you're gonna go to unfamiliar places by yourself but this uh, the Garmin the fact that it records it and that it uh, has such good reception is reassuring but not foolproof and lastly if you're going to depend on electronics you need to pack extra batteries and cables to charge those electronics so that's pretty important uh, especially if you're going on multi-day hikes you got to get good external batteries and they will be worth their weight in gold so that's it so yeah this particular trail is well built up well maintained not wilderness at all so anyone should be comfortable coming here day so I was too lazy to get something else ready so it's getting uh, later in the day and I already know that uh the rain gear is not the solution uh, it is the solution for the morning but as soon as you start hitting hills or terrain you're gonna want to take it off so I'm gonna spray this now because I hate to spray it and wear it because it's a disgusting feeling I like it to dry a little bit so it's lightweight and it has long sleeves you want long sleeves when you're dealing with insects because I really can't stress how brutal they are up here Bug spray, you don't need to come here without bug spray or a net. But you're gonna want, you're definitely gonna want long sleeves and bug spray. So, I've hiked no north before, but never in Minnesota. Um, so, I remember there was lots and lots of bugs there as well. Now, as you can see, I did not bring much stuff. Cause this is just a 10 mile hike i'm just up here to check stuff out in case i ever want to come back and do multi-day trails here even with insect repellent the bugs are really bad it's muddy in some places this is still a very easy trail, a good beginner trail for anyone that wants to go deeper into forests but is afraid of getting lost. You're not going to get lost on this trail. Look how well maintained it. This is well deep into the trail. Very well blazed. So this would be a good longer beginner trail.
That's Lake Superior. And definitely hike down to it. Still a very well maintained trail. Definitely a beginner trail, well worth it. Not a lot of hills, mostly straight, so your physical conditioning really does not matter here. You can easily do this trail. And you can easily go down, which I'm actually gonna do. But I also think the trail leads right down to it. This is pretty cool, and it's not even cold, and there's no bugs here next to the water. So it's about 10 a.m., and at the end of July, it starts to get much warmer here. So I had to change my rain gear, which really does keep you comfortable in the breeze uh, when you're in the shade. But with walking and getting later in the day, it was getting real hot and I was starting to sweat. So I had to change this. I'm glad I prepared it for the bugs because they're still there, but as it's getting later in the day, they're not as bad. If you're walking and have bug spray on, they're not as bad, but if you stop, they're coming and now we're about three miles into the trail so we're not even far away from this and it's not as well maintained and you need good boots waterproof otherwise you're gonna be miserable it's, it's actually a really nice hike very well marked good beginner effort beginner land nav skills just follow the trail really nice trail just the only downside is the bugs Tons of insects. Very muddy. For a long stretch now. Huh? Definitely need good boots here no matter what. So I went the wrong way and now I got to go back through this nasty ass mud again so I probably lost about an hour that's why it's important to know where you're at because now if I didn't have a way to check where I'm at <coughs> I would not even 
nowhere to go once I realized I was lost other than backwards because I wouldn't be where I think I was. So I'm finally back where I should have and again this continues to be a pretty well maintained trail given that we are about three miles from the trailhead and this is Lake Superior Trail going down to the, to the lake. Again I'm showing this so people know it's easy well maintained even though I got lost temporarily it's easy to find your way back I don't remember where you're going I got distracted by the lake and just went the opposite way but I had a way to check where I'm at so that's why it's always important to be able to check where you are at I don't know why this water is so brown I think it's the rocks underneath the water actually A lot less bugs here. They're very beautiful. So since I make religious videos, I figured I might as well uh, throw in some teachings about things that people may not know about uh, here. A uh, few things I get asked frequently is what is Islam? So Islam is confused as this uh, congregation or a mass of people who differ in their cultures and uh, they all profess the same thing but differ severely in how they behave. So most Muslims, people who call themselves Muslims, perceive themselves as religious people when in fact only a, a small minority is. And even among that small minority there are extremists who present culture as religion and uh, refuse to accept anything otherwise. So it's it, like Christianity, Islam is completely disjointed and uh, it is, as an organization, it survives, but as a faith, it has lost its way. So that is Islam. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, talk about, is addiction. God says in the Quran, in chapter 5, starting with verse 90, All you who believe, intoxicants and gambling, an altar set up. And dividing by arrows are filth, devil's work. Avoid them that you may be successful. Surely the devil is trying to introduce hatred and animosity among you by means of intoxicants and gambling. And to keep you away from prayer. And to cause you to forget about God. Will you not then stop? And then these verses uh, end with, And obey God and obey the messenger, but be cautious. If you turn away then the messenger's duty is only to clearly deliver. So, if you want to be successful, you know you cannot be an addict. That is, that should be apparent so much. Just look at San Francisco, look at uh, Skid Row, look at whatever you want, uh, and that should be painfully obvious. Look at Kensington Street in Philadelphia, any of that. So this is one of the campsites here. It's actually pretty amazing. 
in any case, if you want to be successful, you have to listen to God. But then, as we were told, obey God and obey the messenger, but be cautious. If you turn away, then know that only the delivering of the message is upon our messenger. If we want to save ourselves from addiction, if we claim to be Muslims, then we have to, we have to observe prayer because God says in the Quran, O you who believe, I'm sorry, uh, and recite what has been revealed to you from your Lord and keep up prayer. Surely prayer keeps away from indecency and evil and remembrance of God is greatest. Whatever person decides to keep up prayer, given that they have to be sober when they pray because God also says, O you who believe, do not approach prayer while intoxicated until you know what you are saying. If they choose prayer and behave as Muslims should behave, their Islam will save them from addiction because you cannot get high as compulsively as you otherwise would when you observe every prayer. Your chances to smoke or drink or inject and be sober for the next prayer are very few uh, and far in between and just in that manner you will have more chance of a successful life. So keep up prayer because that is everything we have. These uh, camping spots are amazing. There's actually not a lot of bugs. They're level, perfect for camping. I would definitely recommend coming camping here as long as you address the bugs. Another camping place. Another campsite, I don't know which one this is.
is another cabin. So you have to have reservations for camping or cabins. There's a toilet up there. I think this is Big Carp River. This is a really nice campsite. Lots of bugs though. So I'm down here at the end of the hike and uh, what I notice here next to the water because of this last camp is that there is no bugs here whatsoever, not even one. By this moving river, it's nice and cool and there is no bugs whatsoever. I think probably at night be much cooler next to this river. Uh, probably gets down to like, even in the summer, down to 40s at night. Uh, 40s, 50s, so you still have to uh, if you're going to camp, you need to bring something warmer. But uh, the day is pretty nice and there's no bugs next to this river. So if anybody thinks that they should camp in this last camp, you have to make reservations. And uh, I think that's a road to camp. So this is a little bit steep. That one was not easy, but not too hard. So on my way back, I'm back by this Big Carp River four bunk cabin with a toilet. So the toilet is 
a bit of a steep climb. But I'm gonna go up here. Man, you it's quite a ways. Let me see how good of a throw it actually is. Definitely requires a lot of effort to get to. No bugs. Disgusting. But no bugs. Close the lid. It's better than nothing. But it ain't great. I'll turn to Davis dig a hole. That's the cabin. And there's the other cabin. Also, a very steep ascent to the toilet. This is also a really nice site and it has signal. It actually has internet.
They're all good campsites around here. I'm heading back to the road and I'm back in this first couple miles of the of the trail from the road from the trailhead and it's lots of bugs so when you go like maybe three miles in the bugs decrease significantly and you can actually camp out there here in the forest they're still pretty bad even there in the, in the middle of the day so I'm almost back so far I've uh, gone 11 miles, that's because I got lost at one point. Been here six and a half hours. And average speed, 2.3 miles per hour. And this is me stopping, taking breaks, not rushing at all. So that is a very comfortable face. And it's now 2.30, I started at 8 a.m. So you can easily do maybe 15, 20 miles in one day, which is pushing us with energy. You can't do that every day. But you can do 10 to 15 miles easily if you want to hike through these, uh, these trails, especially this one being so easy. You can easily do 20 miles here. That take about two hours, I mean 10 hours. I'm back at the trailhead. Uh, took it real slow. Took me almost seven hours, 12 miles, because I got lost. I went the wrong way for a mile, then I had to walk a mile back. But a uh, piece of uh, 2.4 miles an hour. This is a park on that porcupine out this wilderness. State Park, tons of hikes here. These are the ones I did. If you want to make the reservations for those camps, that's the address. So you get you make a permit, then you have to go pick it up. Emergency information. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. There's predominantly black bears here, so you don't want to play dead. You want to fight back. That's it. This is Pinkerton Trailhead. There's plenty of parking. That's it. This hike is easy for beginners. Easy hike for beginners, awesome camping. Easy to access trailhead. Um, definitely bring a battery if you're gonna be staying over and taking a lot of photos. Uh, it gets chilly at night here, so you have to stay warm. There was some sort of a permit mentioned uh, in All Trails app, but I didn't have any permit then. I did fine. Uh, it's pretty hot during the day. Mosquitoes in some places are terrible. Uh, 
this is a really nice hike. That's it. Pinkerton uh, Trailhead. There is tons of big old mosquitoes or flies, and you definitely, definitely, definitely need bear spray. Oh, uh, not bear. Well, yeah, you need that too, but bug spray. It is pretty bad just on the trailhead. There's lots of parking spaces. So this is at 8 a.m. on a Wednesday.